Now to the Australia Day honours. We haven't got a clue how they're decided or who decides them, but we do know it's a case of sending the clowns. Among the recipients was the ABC's medical reporter, Norman Swan, who was recognised for his significant service to the broadcast media as a science and health commentator. Hmm. You know, and my, my, my view is that it's too much of a coincidence that Shane Warren and the uh, Labour senator in Victoria uh, died not long after a, a COVID infection. I and mean, people are reporting sudden death um, after a COVID infection. It's not benign. Dr Norman Swan has issued an apology uh, to suggesting there may be a COVID link to the deaths of Labour senator Kimberly Kiching and cricket great Shane Warren. Dr Swan says he has personally apologised to Senator Kiching's husband yesterday and that he made an error that he regrets. Where was Norman Swan? I mean, he never misses an opportunity to put his head on TV. For services in shooting his mouth off, for services in making alarmist and false predictions at the start of the pandemic that ICU wards would be overwhelmed, for services in being a snitch, as in taking photos of motorists during lockdown and tweeting them on social media for services in being an egotistical git, particularly in describing himself as Australia's most trusted doctor in his books. Anyway, using Swan and previous Order of Australia recipients as an example, we're going to give you a short guide on how you too can get yourself a gong. Well, for starters, it helps to be a conspiracy theorist, <laughs> particularly one who attacks innocent women for their appearance, like, shall we say, I don't know, have a, I got one. Leftist loving Maggie Jabansky, who in 2021 singled out Jenny Morrison, tweeting, I genuinely thought this was a photoshopped Handmaid's Tale meme, but no, it's <laughs> 21st century Aussie life. <laughs> Not only that, she falsely implied the Prime Minister's wife was a white supremacist, tweeting, quote, What's this little hand signal thingy? Appalling. Incidentally, those tweets still remain online. And your chances of winning a gong will improve considerably if you complement your nastiness with a fondness for the bottle. Enter social commentator Jane Caro, who after the Coalition's unexpected win in 2019 tweeted, Australia, if the LNP wins, we have decided to be a backward-looking country in a backwater. I wish I was a New Zealander. And also this, well, Australia may be effed and the whole planet not far behind, but I'm at the best, most brilliant and cool wedding I've ever been to. So I shall just dance and get pissed and stick two rude fingers up at all the truculent turds who voted to turn backwards. Is she 12? <laughs> <laughs> what is that? Still on the subject of nasty emotional outbursts, here's <laughs> former ABC presenter and columnist Mike Carlton, who has a long history of attacking women online. Seeing Liberal MP Nicole Flint on Q&A in 2020, he tweeted, never have I admired Jimmy Barnes so much as tonight. How does he not leap from his seat and strangle this liberal shill oh. on his right? As Nicole Flint said in response, quote, I rarely lower myself to respond to people like you, but Twitter should ban you for your disgusting attacks on women like me and Shari Markson and <coughs> so many others. Twitter must reform their system and we must reform our Oz honours system so some good comes from your dangerous behaviour. That was Nicole Qu Flint in response to Mike Carlton. Indeed it was. And it also helps your chances of a gong if you promote yourself as the lead investigator of the Australian Me Too movement. <laughs> Journalist Tracy Spicer in 2017. Many of the people accused of serial abuse and harassment overseas have been really respected, talented professionals. Have any of the names that have come up in your investigations shocked you? Oh, Patricia, so many of them. A lot of these names are beloved people in Australian media and entertainment history. So <laughs> many of them. So, so many of them. Well, Tracy Spicer, it's been more than five years and we're still waiting for the scoop. <laughs> and lastly, you too can gain an order of this august nature list if you excel in service to oneself. <laughs> particularly in reporting to self-pity Lisa Wilkinson. 
the last six months have not been easy. And the relentless targeted toxicity by some sections of the media has taken a toll, not just on me, but on people I love. Don't get me wrong, I'm not above criticism, far from it. I'm human and I don't always get it right. None of us do. But by God, I've tried. I've given this job everything I have. Oh, oh Lisa, love, uh, really, you're not working in the salt mines for Siberia. It's three hours a week on television. Someone provides your dress, someone does your makeup, your script's written for you. <laughs> As Crikey's David Hardacre observed this week about the honours process, quote, the system also operates in near total secrecy. Quote, the Governor General's office never comments on specific awards and the processes are exempt from freedom of information laws. Australia Day honours Australia Day plonkers, more like it.